Number one, which of the species do not have a complete outer shell? So I'll draw the dot and cross diagram at the bottom. For those that are terminal atoms, I do not put in all the electrons, only those used for bonding. You can see that boron in BF3 only has 6 electrons, so boron do not have a complete outer shell. For the rest, okay, they all are surrounded by 8 electrons in the center. Number 2, ammonia is used in the Haber process, which will not bring about increase in the rate of the forward reaction, decreasing the size of the catalyst. So when catalysts are, are introduced and all that, the EA actually decreases. The forward reaction and the backward reaction will increase. So this will increase the forward reaction. Increasing the pressure, if we have high pressure, we have a higher concentration on both sides. So the rate of reaction for both sides will also increase. Increasing the temperature. When we have a higher temperature, the particles have more energy. They will react in a faster uh, rate of reaction. Okay. Removing the ammonia as its form. Removing ammonia. Your backward reaction will decrease because the concentration of ammonia is uh, decreased but your forward reaction remains the same. So removing ammonia will not bring about increase in the rate of the forward reaction. Number 3. Which pair of description is correct for this reaction? It could be viewed as heat of combustion of hydrogen. It could also be viewed as heat of formation of water. So okay, it could be combustion and formation, depending on whether you're talking about hydrogen or water. And for both cases, it's exothermic reaction. Your change in energy will be negative. Question 4. Second ionization energy means removal of one electron from a Ca+. Plus. So it's between B and C. Removal of one electron from a Ca+. Plus. And it is an endothermic reaction. You need to overcome the energy. So it will be positive in value. It will be B. Number 5, ammonium to ammonia, ethene to ethane. So I draw the structures here. Okay. What similar features do they have? There is a decrease in the bond angle. From 109.5, we get 107. 120 to become 109.5. You can also check that the lone pair is not relevant for your ethane. There's no change in oxidation number. And for ammonia, there's no disappearance of your pi bond. Number 6. We have to calculate the amount of ethane gas, 0.56 grams, at this pressure and temperature. So we put inside this equation important thing is we change this to Pascal temperature we change to Kelvins right and volume will be in terms of cubic meter before we can use the gas constant 8.31 so once that's all sorted out okay, we can have V equals to mass over MRRT over pressure we put all these values in with your gas constant this will be in terms of cubic meter if you want to find centimeter because the options are given in centimeter we multiply this by 1 million times 10 to the power of 6 
Okay, so we get 494. Okay, we got rounding up. So let's try. 0.56 divided by 28 times 8.31 times 303 divided by 102. Okay, this is your in terms of cubic meter. So we multiply by 1 to the power 6. This will be your cubic centimeter. Seven. We have propanol, combustion of hydrogen, combustion of carbon, and combustion of propanol. So we write out the formula, the equation for heat of formation of propanol because that's what they're interested in. And then we know that heat of combustion of reactants minus heat of combustion of products, you get heat of formation. So we substitute in reactants, three times of carbon, hydrogen, three times of hydrogen, subtract heat of combustion of propanol, only one more, so no, mu no multiplier, or multiply by one, and then we have minus 254 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so pretty handy to remember, heat of formation, heat of combustion of reactants, minus heat of combustion of products, which are all given here. Under which condition is a gas most likely to behave like an ideal gas? This is recalation, high temperature, low pressure. Okay, this is when gas will have negligible attraction. Number 9. Which of the equilibrium will give us the final number of moles 2 plus x number of moles if we start off with all these conditions? The issue with this question is we have to do a bit of trial and error. Okay, answer is actually B. So I'll show you how it's arrived. We will write out the equation or the equilibrium based on option B. And then we put in the number of moles that we are given, 2 moles of P that we start off with. Nothing formed for Q and R yet. And then we know that X moles of R was present at the end. Then we try to figure out the changes. That means R will be increased by X. Q, the change will be increased by 2X. P will be decreased by 2X. Then we write the equilibrium out. Then we tally up the total amount. 2 minus 2x plus 2x plus x. The total is 2 plus x. So this is the amount that we will have in the end. So B is the answer. If you try the rest, you realize that you will not get the total 2 plus x. Okay? So it's a trial and error approach. Number 10, what is the change of titanium in the reaction? So in this reaction, we have the iron, the oxidation number is 2 plus, okay, given by this information here. Oxygen will be minus 6 in total, your titanium will be plus 4. And in this case, your oxygen is plus 4, or oxygen is minus 4 your titanium is plus 4 also. So there's no change in the oxidation number. Eleven, manufacture of aluminium. Which statement is incorrect? Okay. Aluminium ions are oxidized. It's incorrect because aluminium ions are actually reduced. Al3 plus to become Al minus. So it's Actually, this is incorrect. The rest are cor correct. Aluminium is reduced at the cathode with this reaction. The cryolite lowers the 
the melting point and also dissolves the electrolyte and the graphite anode okay what's happening at the anode is oxygen gas is formed and then that will react with your graphite to form carbon dioxide so the graphite anode also burns away number 12 aluminium chloride can catalyze certain reactions so what is happening here is actually takes in a chlorine from your RCL how can it do that is because it itself has only six electrons at incomplete octet so it can actually take in one more chlorine by dative bond Thirteen. When a mineral is heated in Bunsen burner, a colorless gas is evolved. Then when we put the solid into hydrochloric acid, we get effervescence again. So what it's actually trying to tell us is there are, there are mixtures of carbonates. Okay, one carbonate will decompose at the start to give off carbon dioxide. Another carbonate will not decompose. But when the remaining carbonate that, that did not decompose was added to an acid, and then that was where we get our carbon dioxide coming out again. So there are a mixtures of carbonates. So we look at one that will decompose, calcium carbonate, and then one that will actually react with acid later. That's your barium carbonate. Magnesium carbonate and calcium carbonate both will decompose. So at the end of the reaction, we will only get the oxides and we will not have the second observation. Fourteen. Perhaps the difficulty is creating the balance equation. Aluminium, barium nitrate, we get barium oxides, aluminium oxides and nitrogen. So the balance equation is above. Okay, once you have the balance equation, it's just a more calculation question. We start off with the mass of your barium nitrate. We get 0 0.03 moles or 0 0.003 moles. By ratio, we also get 0 0.003 moles of nitrogen gas. And under room conditions, one mole will be 24 thousand cubic centimeter so 0 0.003 multiplied by 24 thousand cubic centimeter we will get the volume of N2 okay so perhaps the difficulty is the balance equation at the start fifteen which of these group two oxides produce the one with the highest pH highest pH means which one can dissolve the uh, which one is the most soluble hydroxides okay they will react with water to form hydroxides and then the hydroxides dissolve as we we have to remember the rule as you go down the group okay. solubility of the hydroxides okay, increases down the group so the one that's most soluble among all of them is the one that is the lowest group 2 oxides, barium. Okay. 